I'll walk you through an image editing workflow for wildlife and nature photography in Affinity Photo, combining a variety of techniques to end up with a high quality result. First, I've opened my raw file in Photo, which takes me into the Develop Persona or workspace. You can do as little or as much editing as you wish during the initial raw development. I'll make some minimal adjustments, reducing the highlights and lowering the black point to compress the tones and produce a flatter image as a starting point. At this stage, I'm not going to add any additional noise reduction or sharpening. Photo already performs color or chroma noise reduction by default, and I'm going to selectively apply luminance denoising to the background detail using masking, which I'll do in the main photo persona where we use a non-destructive layer-based workflow. I'll change the output to raw layer which enables non-destructive RAW, giving me the ability to come back in and change the initial development parameters if I need to. Then I'll click Develop. Before doing anything else, I'm going to make a selection of the subject, which will enable me to create various adjustment and filter layers that only affect either the subject or background detail. I'll switch to the Selection Brush tool here, then click drag to make a selection of the butterfly. Once I have a rough selection, I'll then click Refine up here to move into Selection Refinement. Now with the matte brush, I'll just click drag over some of these areas, like the antenna, the legs, the furry area at the bottom here, and the wing detail to mat them and produce a higher quality output. In some circumstances, like with this example, where the foreground and background detail are a little trickier to separate, it may be beneficial to reduce border width as well. This will shrink the expanded matted areas slightly, which will help later on when trying to increase contrast between the subject and background. Once I'm happy with the modified selection, I'll click Apply. Then I'm going to create two groups, one for the subject or foreground detail, one for the background. I'll go to Layer, New Group, then double click into the text and name this Subject. Then use this option to add a mask layer to the group based on the active selection. The background detail will disappear. Don't worry about this, as it will return shortly. Now I'll create a second group and call it Background. And at this point, I'll invert the selection. I can see the shortcut for this by looking on the Select menu. I'll use Shift Command I on Mac. Shift Control I on Windows. Then I'll add a mask layer based on the inverted selection to this background group. And finally, I'll clear the selection by using Command D on Mac, Control D on Windows. Again, don't worry about the current masking result on screen. I'm now going to add some adjustments and filters in quick succession. First, I'll use Command M on Mac. Control M on Windows to add a curves adjustment, and I'll click drag and place this inside the subject group by hovering over the text here and releasing the mouse button. Expanding the group, I'll see the curves adjustment layer inside it. I'll then add an HSL adjustment with Command U on Mac, Control U on Windows. Because I'm currently positioned in the child layer stack, this will already be in the group. I'll now move to the top of the parent layer stack. And I'll repeat this process, adding both curves and HSL adjustment layers to the background group. Then I'll add a live denoise filter by going to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Noise, Denoise. So I now have a layer set up with two groups that will allow me to affect the subject and background detail independently of one another. As I've got the live denoise dialog open, I'll focus on the noise reduction to begin with. 
Zooming in, I can see a fair amount of luminance noise in the image. As I start to drag the luminance slider up, this will disappear from the background area, but crucially, not the subject. I'll close this dialog down and then move on to the adjustments in the subject group. Clicking on the thumbnail of the curves adjustment layer will open its settings. I can then click drag on the diagonal line to create a node and drag it up slightly, and this will brighten the subject. I'll then switch to the curves adjustment masked to the background and darken the detail instead. Next, I'll move on to the HSL shift adjustment masked to the background and reduce the saturation. Then move across to the equivalent adjustment masked to the foreground and increase the saturation slightly. At this point, I may wish to experiment further with the color detail. Whilst I'm still positioned in the subject group, I'll go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Selective Color, and on the dialog, move across to the Blues color range. Then increase the Cyan slider and decrease the Yellow slider. This will help to enhance the intensity of the blue color detail here. Whilst the separation between the subject and background is quite effective, I'm not quite happy with the brightness of the butterfly's head here. I feel it could perhaps be more prominent. One way to achieve this would be to dodge the area, but I'll do it non-destructively with a pixel layer. On the layers panel, I'll move to the top of the layer stack. Then I'll use this option to create a new empty pixel layer. Change its blend mode to overlay and bring its opacity down to 50%. Zooming into the image, I'll then select the paintbrush tool with B and I'll use a modifier to quickly alter the brush hardness. On Mac, it's Control and Option. On Windows, it's Control and Alt. With these two keys held down, I'll hold left click on the mouse and drag right to increase the brush width, then drag up to reduce the hardness all the way to 0%. Finally, I'll swap the primary and secondary colors here, so white is the active color. I can click to toggle between them, or use X on the keyboard. Then I'll paint into the head. The effect is too strong, so I'll experiment with the layer opacity until I find a good balance. Moving on, I have a small area to the right of the butterfly I want to retouch. It appears to be some kind of particle that on its own is slightly distracting. To remove this without modifying the original image data, I can create a new pixel layer above the initial raw layer. Then long click on the healing brush tool to access the inpainting brush tool. On the context toolbar, I'll change this option to current layer and below, then simply brush over the area to remove it. The retouched result will be written onto this pixel layer, so I haven't had to rasterize or destructively alter this raw layer. At the moment, I'm not sure where I stand in terms of the image brightness and distribution of tones. The histogram is not always particularly helpful for this, so instead, I'll go to Window, Scope, to expose the Scope panel. The intensity waveform is more informative, telling me that most of the tones are sitting in the 10 to 60 range, where 100 is pure white or full intensity and zero is pure black. What I might do then is add a brightness contrast adjustment layer. By moving the sliders, I can easily see on the intensity waveform how I'm affecting the distribution of tones. It's a small change, but I'm happier with the overall brightness and contrast of the image now. I may, however, experiment with changing the blend mode to luminosity. Notice the small difference in color intensity. Whereas a normal blend mode will affect the red, green, and blue channel values equally, 
Luminosity will blend them in a weighted fashion instead, giving the highest weighting to green, then red, and finally blue. Generally speaking, this results in a more pleasing shift in color intensity based on the way we perceive color. Also note that the adjustment is currently below the two groups which are also applying adjustments. In many workflows, layer positioning can be important and is something you should always be mindful of. In this case, dragging the adjustment above the groups produces a different result with more contrast. I may prefer this look since I want a clearer separation between the foreground and background detail, but the beauty of non-destructive editing is that you remain free to experiment like this. Now let's add the finishing touches to the image, sharpening and cropping. A great detail enhancement technique to try is multi-bandpass sharpening. I'll zoom to 100% to ensure an accurate preview. Then I'll go to Layer, New Life Filter Layer, Sharpen, High Pass. And I'll move this High Pass layer to the top of the layer stack. The idea with this approach is to stack multiple High Pass filters, gradually increasing the radius value each time. For the first filter, I'll set the radius value to 1 pixel. Check Monochrome and set the Blend Mode to Soft Light. Now I'll duplicate this live filter with Command-J on Mac, Control-J on Windows and set the second radius value to 2 pixels. I'll duplicate again and change this radius value to 3 pixels. Then duplicate once more and change the radius here to 4 pixels. The result is a pleasant sharpening effect that doesn't have any obvious artifacting, such as halos or ringing around edge detail. Because it's achieved entirely with live high-pass filters, you can go in and change each radius value at any time if you need to alter the level of sharpening. Finally, I'll crop the image. I can select the crop tool using C on the keyboard. Then I'll drag out a crop boundary that incorporates the subject and removes a good portion of the background detail, using the return key to commit the crop once I'm happy with it. Cropping is non-destructive, however, so if I'm unsure of the final composition, I can always select the crop tool again, check reveal up here, and modify the crop boundary before using return again to commit the new crop. And there we go. From start to finish, a completely non-destructive workflow for wildlife and nature photography. Here's the before and the after. I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.